Hey everyone, really great to see all of you here today. Uh, my name is Prasanth. Uh, I work at Microsoft on the Onyx and Onyx Runtime team. I'm also on the Onyx uh, Steering Committee. Um, and I have four other co-members of my steering of the steering committee with me. Um, and you'll be hearing from some of them today. And so I want to jump right into it. And most of you are intimately familiar with Onyx, but we also have a lot of new community members. So I wanted to just briefly give an overview of what is Onyx. And Onyx is you can get a lot more information about Onyx at our website, right? Onyx.ai. Um, and that's where the screen grab is for from. But basically, Onyx was designed to solve a number of machine learning problems that different companies were having. We were having it at Microsoft, and then when we talked to folks in the industry, they were all having similar problems as well. And at the core of it, it's about interoperability in multiple dimensions. Um, so when you boil it down, Onyx really kind of consists of two key things. There's a common set of operators that define the building blocks for machine learning models. And then there's a common file format for exchanging these models between different components, like the training systems and the inferencing systems. And uh, this was super useful for a lot of different people and for a couple of reasons. One, if you're a software, if you're on the software side, you're creating applications and services and ML models, then Onyx lets you kind of uh, use whichever framework or tool you want. Uh, you'll hear about all the different frameworks that support Onyx later today and, and kind of get this common model that can run on a variety of different hardware. So you have access to multiple frameworks and you have access to multiple types of hardware and hardware accelerators. Uh, on the flip side, if you're a hardware vendor, then Onyx kind of gives you access to all customers who are using all these various frameworks. Like you don't have to spend a bunch of time customizing for each specific framework out there because there's there's a few head ones, but then it's like a long tail of different tools and frameworks that create these models. And so Onyx helps you kind of reach all of those customers uh, a little bit more easily. So, okay, thank you. Um, you know, Onyx has been pretty useful. So oh, there's a lot of people in the community who are using it. You know, these are just some of the logos uh, of the companies that are using it. Uh, and it's great to see this awesome community that has evolved around Onyx over the past few years. Uh, by the way, if your logo is not on here and you want it to be, please reach out and we'll get that taken care of. And Onyx, there's a community around Onyx, but the Onyx development is also done by the community. Uh, Onyx is an open source project. Uh, it's part of the Linux LF AI and Data Foundation, the Linux Foundation, uh, and it has open governance. Um, that means there's no one company that, that controls it, right? Uh, and it, it, this comes out in kind of two ways. One, there's a steering committee that's elected every year. We actually just finished the elections a few weeks ago, and there was a blog that went out uh, earlier this week announcing the results of that. So I'm really happy to welcome... Can you go back? Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm really happy to welcome Andreas Fellner. Uh, so he's a new member on the steering committee. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Wen Ming, who's in the audience, uh, who was on the steering committee last year for his service for the, all the last whole year. Um, so while, it, while there's a steering committee that kind of looks over broad things for the, for the project, the real work for Onyx actually happens in the special interest groups and the working groups. This is where all the work, the actual technical work gets done. Um, and we have a number of uh, SIGs, as we call them, and working groups here. There's architecture and infra operators, converters, uh, the models and tutorials, and then there's a new pre-processing working group uh, that's uh, happening as well. And this, these are led by community members as well. And we've had some new leaders join us in this past uh, nine months or so. So, you know, uh, the ones with the stars, uh, Lacun, uh, Thiago, Kevin, Jackie, uh, thank you for stepping up and helping lead these uh, SIGs and working groups. And of course, thank you to the folks who have been already leading the working groups for, for some time. And you're gonna hear from each of these working groups on what they've been doing uh, over the last uh, few months and the latest technical updates. But for now, I'm gonna hand it off to Mayank, who's gonna give you an update on the latest progress with Onyx. Thanks, Prashant. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mayank. I work for NVIDIA in the TensorRT group, and I'm on the steering committee. So I'm going to be presenting a few slides on the state of the union for Onyx. Next slide, please. So this chart shows some companies that contribute tools to different categories of Onyx. 
uh, we've divided this into three categories and uh, you know we couldn't fit everyone in there so apologies if we left any, anyone out but three categories um, we defined three categories the first one is tools that help in the creation of onyx models or manipulation of existing onyx models obviously all the major frameworks show up there and then there are some tools that uh, like uh, that allow you to modify existing onyx models to add remove node etc the next section, uh, the next category is tools that are used for running uh, these Onyx models or compiling them to optimize. Uh, Onyx runtime obviously is very well known, supports several device backends, and then a lot of companies uh, produce tools that support their particular architectures. And the last one, the last category is uh, tools used for visualization of Onyx models. And you know, Netron is familiar to most people, but there are other options as well. So. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some statistics from engagement uh, about engagement and usage of Onyx. These are over the last six months uh, since the last community update was made. Uh, we see good uh, uh, metrics across the board. The number of PRs has gone up by 15%, 10% more contributors, 10% more stars, 63% more dependent repos, 28% uh, more forks, 68% uh, more mentions in research papers, which is great. Uh, the number of models in the model zoo has gone up by 50%, over 50%, which is awesome, and a very healthy increase in the number of monthly downloads. So these stats are quite encouraging to see. Next time. Okay, so now I'll talk quickly about the few releases that have happened since the last community update. Uh, Onyx 1.11 was released earlier in February this year. That came with Opset 16, which introduced a few new operators and updated some operators. Uh, the Onyx Model Hub was introduced, which uh, is a tool that lets you pull pre-trained models from uh, any model zoo, basically, but the Onyx Model Zoo by default, and you can point it to a different model zoo that uh, follows the prescribed structure. Uh, there were a few utilities, other utilities introduced as well. Uh, the Compose util utility allows Folks to create combined models with pre-processing graphs uh, and uh, the pre-processing networks and inference networks. There was a function builder utility introduced that helps create in creating function ops. Uh, there were bug fixes, infra improvements, and doc updates. Uh, the if you go to the release page by following the link here, that'll give you all details of which ops were introduced, and it will also um, uh, let you find out more about you know, these utilities if you're interested. And then a few days ago, uh, Onyx uh, 1.12 was introduced as well. That came with Onyx uh, Opset 17 with a lot more uh, new operators and a few updated operators as well. There were shape infer inference enhancements, bug fix, infra updates, and doc updates. We uh, dropped support for Python 3.6 and added support for Python 3.10. And uh, we dropped also dropped support for 32-bit Linux uh, due to low usage. And again, uh, this link will lead you to the release notes for this release with more details. And a big thank you to everyone in the community for uh, countless hours of work uh, that helped make uh, uh, all these releases happen. Uh, that's it for this slide. And now I'll turn it over to Rajiv, who will uh, help you through the roadmap process. Thank you, Mayank. Uh, so I'll cover uh, the Onyx roadmap uh, process and the different updates and the status that have happened uh, to some of the submissions from the community. So uh, we had like a, a full, full fledged uh, like request for the features by requesting the community to submit uh, what they would like to see, and these are long, long term. Uh, intercepts, right? And uh, some are ongoing, some are finished. So you'll see in the status that I'll go through. So the request for features happened in uh, July 2021 of last year. And uh, then there were different uh, presenters uh, with uh, selected topics. So we had a very good uh, six weekly community roadmap discussions. And uh, after the discussion, we had to go through and refer the submitters to the different SIGs and working groups for the ongoing discussion and the implementation as well. So that 
uh, process completed in October 2021. So it's been about uh, close to six months, essentially. And there were 12 uh, roadmap requests that were selected for further progress and assigned to the SIGs and the working groups. So basically, like uh, these are long-term uh, intercepts, right? And uh, you will see in the status that I'll uh, go through. Uh, next slide. So uh, this is a quick snapshot of uh, what those requests were. Uh, for example, I'll not go in detail you know, to each one of them, but new operators for data pre-processing. There is a pre-processing working group, and uh, that that is being handled in the in that particular working group. So uh, essentially, there were different operators that uh, were needed, and these are uh, also going over to the operator SIG for approval. So a lot of them got implemented and still the work continues on uh, the further uh, updates, uh, like for example, processing the dates and so on. And uh, the next two were uh, more of a request to have a C API. Today it's Python wrapper uh, over C++. So there was a request coming in uh, from uh, Oracle that they wanted a C API for uh, for Onyx, and uh, currently Java and C have their own C Sharp have their own uh, kind of wrapper and implementation uh, for the two projects. And uh, there is currently like Java framework which uh, Oracle has uh, has already uh, has already open sourced, and uh, this work continues and uh, probably it will need to be assessed as we as we go along. Currently, there is an individual framework for Java as well as C Sharp. And then, of course, uh, C++ is there. Uh, then the meta information in uh, tensors, uh, like there is more structured, quantized information that is needed to flow through the model and the tensors. And uh, that is also uh, trying to get uh, a path identified of how that can be done. And uh, on the uh, on the end-to-end -end pipeline with Onyx operators, uh, this is identified as a long-term intercept, and uh, further refining of the proposal is happening at this moment. And you can see, like the proposed SIGs that uh, the requesters have been asked to go and work with. So, if uh, in the SIG as uh, chairs, if you see some of these come come as requests, these are sort of being identified as long term, not essentially like uh, as is accepted, but going through the regular cycle of uh, uh, of understanding and uh, what needs to be done. Uh, uh, for the converters, there is uh, some progress. Some of the higher functioning ops were uh, have gotten support in the converter, so thanks for that. And the effort still continues as the opportunities rise. Next slide, please. So uh, with different offsets and with uh, quantization, essentially there was a gap like uh, offset five, six, seven. How do we go and uh, convert them to offset 13? Uh, so that was a request. So the past two Onyx releases have been handling uh, that uh, pretty well uh, to have uh, support for the transition of these old operators into the new uh, post quantization kind of era of ops. And uh, the Onyx model zoo example for end-to-end -end training that is identified as a long-term intercept. And uh, the next uh, one with respect to federated learning for Onyx, uh, there is no new Onyx operators that are uh, required. So exploring different solutions, which are very framework uh, agnostic over there. Uh, for the improvement to shape inference, uh, this is uh, like the submitter is analyzing uh, further on what to be targeted for the future. And the last uh, two here, uh, Onyx model provenance and the security, uh, uh, essentially you'll hear like a talk on this as well for responsible AI and explainable AI kind of uh, features coming in into, into Onyx. So the initial metadata fields have been defined and there is a bit of issue that has been filed as well. So uh, the next one, is related to how the model model metadata will be used for next precision and examples of that showing up in the zoo as well. The next file, please. So uh, 
as we saw, like uh, you know, there is a lot of a uh, couple of releases that have happened, 1.11, 1.12 that Mayank went over and uh, also Prashant uh, highlighted like how the community has been growing, uh, but we still need a lot of volunteers. It's a community project, so there is a lot of PRs that need uh, to be managed. So uh, request again to the broader community to have more people from your company join uh, this effort and uh, we can take this further and much faster <laughs> out into the industry. So please volunteer. All of you are doing that already, but encourage more people to do so as well. <laughs> uh, next one. So uh, again, please continue to stay engaged and your contributions to Onyx and its related projects. So there are different uh, resources, the website, GitHub, as well as Slack channels. Slack channels, you'll see like uh, so many of them uh, relative to different uh, topics. And uh, the Onyx calendar also has a meetup for uh, our uh, steering committee meetings, as well as the other SIG working groups. So that can be picked up from there. And uh, do sign up for the mailing list as well as uh, follow on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>